Hello, Ben here from Supercoach Insider. Thank you for joining me for my team into round 14. It's starting to get a little bit hairy. It's starting to get a little bit confusing and weird as to what I'm going to do this week with Gorn, with the possibilities of Himmelberg and what I'm going to do with my rucks. And I'll let you know what I'm thinking and the strategies that I will take forward from here. Before we move on, SC Insider 100, you can like us on, find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. Also, all our audio platforms as well. So, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, you name it. And on YouTube, search for us, YouTube. Um, Supercoach Insider, like, subscribe, get amongst it. Today, also brought to you by our sponsors as well. So, manscaped.com. Share them some love. We're waiting on a new uh, endorsement deal for that. So, I'm really excited to announce that they are going to continue us on for another three months. Really excited there. And also Splash Vodka. So I've already had one on the team pod with Swizz, splashvodka.com.au. Get on there, check out the Splash as well. So um, awesome that our sponsors are sending us some more stuff and really keeping up that um, promotion as well. Really happy to have them on board to support us. So please support those that support us, and that's as much as I can say for that today. All right, moving on. I scored 19.05 last week, and that was the, the really the week that I was the most concerned about. Um, I needed a little bit of luck with people playing. I think I had uh, 14 before changes. So I brought in four people that were playing, which worked out well. I really wanted that 18. Uh, obviously, I had Owens. Uh, so I brought out my team. I, you would have known last week. So I brought in Owens, who got, you know, obviously subbed out. I brought in Parrish, who got subbed out. Um wasn't the best idea there. We are got um, we are got a good score, so I was happy with that. Clark from Richmond obviously had a, a decent enough score, so a couple sixties, which was good, um, and I was happy for those because at least if a premium goes a hundred, then I knew at least with a rookie coming on for a sixty odd, then that sort of um, subsidizes that a little bit, so I'd only be a little bit behind. I was expecting to slide a lot last week. Like I'm not even kidding. This was the buy round that I was most worried about. And somehow I actually went up 21 places. So I'm now sitting at 255th overall. Um, I'm looking at even trading out people that are playing this week at this point in time. So as in, I, I think I have about you know 19 or 20 players um, and making some trades around that. So it's going to be interesting. Now the big issue for me, obviously, if I have Max Gorn, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do there. I've been throwing a few little ideas around. If Tickle is named, I might even just keep going for this week just to sort of see what the news is next week as to how he's going because I was in a moon boot for this point in time. They say three to five weeks. Um, I'm not too sure because I think some reports were saying three to five weeks after the buy. Other people are saying three to five weeks total. So I think a little bit more time as it kind of elapses, then we'll get a little bit a better idea. Because he has the buy, he's not really going up or down in price. I think I've already got 18 anyway this week, so it's not going to be the worst scenario in the world. Um, but again, I am sitting 255th, so I don't really want to be playing it safe at this point in time. I really need to kind of push ahead. I've got nine trades left. So when we have a look, let's bring it up. Let's go my team. So this is currently what I'm thinking, and um, it's a little bit risky. So um, let's have a look. So this is my team at the moment. I think I've got nine trades left, uh, six if I do all of this. Um, so it's a little bit risky, this play. So as in, I was thinking, ideally before the Gorn news, I was going to use two trades. I was going to go Hobbs up to, because I banked about 400000 last week, Hobbs up to English, and I was actually going to go Butters to Bonson Pelly, and I could have done that in two trades. Uh, I was going to keep Petraka because I figured at the end of the day, Petraka is going to average me more than Butters, so why would I trade out someone who's basically priced at the same of Butters but will average me more? Um, so I didn't really want to get too carried away there. And at the end of the day, I had enough faith that I think, look, Brody, he's averaging 105 for the year. Uh, he's still heavily priced. I'll take a little bit more data on that. And not only on top of the data, if by some chance you get to, say, round 18 and all of a sudden Boak is named DPP, if there's another DPP in there, then I can look at maybe using that as a bit of a league advantage from round 18 to 23 and seeing if that will give me an advantage from that. Uh, the other option I am considering is even just waiting for Brady, uh, so Bailey Smith to come back. Don't mind that as well, but that at least buys me time. And I think time is definitely deserved. Brody Smith, I spoke with Swiss tonight, um, had like 24 CBAs, played 67% time on ground. So um, 
Fremantle winning game, so I expect that will sort of continue. He should still do quite well. We'll wait and see uh, as to sort of the fold on that, but I need at least a little more data. He got enough ball, had still a pretty good role with CBAs in a wet game, didn't really go through him as much. So I'm looking for more data on that before I sort of throw him out of the water. Um, What I am looking at is I'm trying to work out a way that either I get rid of Gorn and make some moves or whether I can even try and possibly keep him. So at this current point in time, with nine trades before this round, right, ideally I I would like to be able to get English and Bontempelli. Now, I only need one player, except for obviously Gorn's created a big issue there. Uh, I only needed one real player. So I was like, okay, well, if ideally I'd like to go um, Hobbs to English, which I think is a, a dead certain for me this week. Um, I'm looking at, uh, I was looking at some other options where I was like, okay, well, uh, I actually had a look to see if I just went Hobbs to English, um, which is before the Gorn scenario, but I could have looked at um, getting in Bonzapelli next week. And that would have required, um, say, a Weg to down to a Dean, um, and then going and getting up a um, Clark up to somebody else. So that's what I sort of was looking at. This is an option I have considered where I would be getting rid of. Let's have a look at changes. And it would be nice if it showed me. Um, okay, so, why not showing my change? Here we go. Okay, so, um, Clark Hobbs, so Stevens. Now, this is probably not the most smartest of decisions, so I'll probably reverse this, uh, just because, obviously, if Stevens and Clark play, they're going to make a lot of cash this week, and even Hobbs, so it's probably not the smartest decision to sort of go and do that. Uh, those will all make money, but that was a decision to kind of look at, okay, well, what I was considering is, making that decision and trying to kind of maximize for the now and for the later. And how that would work would be the only way I could keep going is if I probably got Himmelberg. Now, I quite like Himmelberg. I spoke with Swizz. Uh, even against Brisbane, a good team, he had 20 kicks out of 21 disposals, um, good effectiveness, plays a decent amount of time on ground, scored 126 then, scored a 180 against the team gone. So he's projected. He's a number one cash cow. He's projected to go up like 63,000 if he scores an 81. So he's definitely someone that I'm considering getting as a short-term solution, knowing that I'll probably burn a trade there. If he goes really well, then I'm like, cool, then I can probably keep him a bit longer. Otherwise, I could flip him to a Bontempelli so easily for the cost of two trades, and then I could have a loophole player to kind of make up those two trades later. So the issue is having a full side, I'm going to have to, anytime someone gets injured, going for a brawl, I'm going to have to burn a trade. Even if they're out for a week, right? I could probably see how the the bench player goes if I have if they play. I could see if they go an eighty, I might be able to keep them. But otherwise, generally speaking, I'm going to have to trade. So what I'm looking at is if I get a loophole player, if someone gets knocked out, if someone gets COVID, then I can actually use that loophole for my forward, my mid uh, ruck and midfield line. So three out of my four lines, three quarters of my team covered. Uh, I could look at sort of doing it that way. Now, the whole Gorn scenario has actually thrown a little bit of, a, of an issue in my team because if I keep him, it's an issue because I could play Himmelberg for a few weeks, right? I could get English into my team, put him into my ruck line for now. I could play Himmelberg in my forward line for a, a few weeks. Gorn comes back. Awesome. English, you're into my um, English, you're back into my forward line. Then I'd be like, okay, well, I'm now, so Himmelberg, I'm now trading you from Himmelberg to Bontempelli. Well, probably won't cost me a huge amount at that point in time. Uh, I might need to go one down, one up for that, possibly. Um, probably wouldn't even need much. I could probably even keep some cash extra for any other trades that I might need later in the future. But then I could actually put Butters at to F6, Bontempelli on field, Gorn's back into my team, hopefully, and killing it. And all of a sudden, everything's right in the world where I've probably got four trades left. Not great, but I guess in a few rounds' time, there's probably about seven rounds left. Uh, where you're kind of holding on. I've got Butters at F7 at that point in time. Now, if yeah, Petrarca, so say, let's, you know, the idea is that I'd say I'd have a look and say, okay, well, uh, Max Gorn, you would just play. So I'd be loopholing sort of Butters. 
or whoever's playing first, or Petrarca. So if Petrarca's playing first, I'd loophole him if he does bad. Bang, swing, butters, you're in there. Hopefully he does better than the poor score that Petrarca got. Or vice versa, I'd be looping butters if he plays early. If he does really well, then I'd be like, cool. Uh, then I'd be looking at sort of moving and then moving to the next line to try and sort of loophole and see if something happens there. So that's what I'm sort of considering there. Um, and I don't think it's a bad play, to be honest. Like you might, you'll cop a little hit maybe on like Himmelberg versus Gorn for a little bit, but then when he comes back, I think my team for that sort of last five to seven rounds, I think will be super strong and be able to make some moves, including having a loophole player with four trades left, and hopefully everything will be right in the world. If Gorn stays out for longer, then that's obviously a big issue, and that's going to cop a hit. Um, at that point in time, I think a lot of the top teams would have traded out Gorn, so maybe I could sort of work that into my scenario. Um, and I am just considering getting rid of him, but if I get English in, I don't want to throw him into the ruck line. I think it's a waste. So if I'm going to get rid of him... It's probably Pruce or Riley O'Brien. If Pruce is named this week, I'm hoping he's probably just been kept out because of the form sort of scenario. Um, the whole same premise kind of goes in. I can then have Pruce there, English forward. If there's an issue, English can go play there. I've got Himmelberg and then hopefully flipping him into like a Bontempelli. Um, and that's what I'm sort of considering at this point in time. So Stuart will be on. Obviously, pay no attention to my VCs and Cs and everything at the moment because I just reverse all these trades. Where should probably be playing. So, Crisp, you can get out. I'll fix all this up later. Clark, I would like to keep um, this week. Hobbs, I definitely wouldn't mind keeping. His break-even's getting up a little bit. Uh, 29, so he's, if he goes an 80 this week, he makes me another 23,000. So it's not the worst play in the world, world to sort of keep him, but I do want English this week. So, that does create issues. Uh, the easiest scenario would be going Gorn to English, Basically, it's a like-for-like like as far as price goes. I could even wait a week. Hobbs goes up in price. Clark goes up in price. But again, from next week, there's only two trades. So that is a, something that I do have to factor in. Uh, again, points on field this week is definitely a big scenario. I want more premiums on field than not um, to really try and sort of just flip it and try and really get some productivity. So it is an interesting scenario. Hobbs has now made 170, uh, 173000 around that mark, so I'm pretty happy with that. I don't want to get too selfish and try and leak the extra twenty to 30000 out. Um, it could be helpful, but again, I'm really trying to push for points on field because of the position I'm in. So if I was sitting a little further out, I'm like, yeah, cool. Like, what's 1000 What's a little bit later? Um, and I'm sort of looking at trying. So I've got about 400000 in the bank. So... The other option is, is I'm assuming that um, this is an option I haven't really explored yet. Now, I think Pruce was probably ill and a whole bunch of stuff. I still think he's their best Ruckman. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen. If he doesn't get named this week, then you just know for sure. If I do have a loophole player, then if Pruce misses a week or so, then I can move him on. He also is 450000 so he still has more money to make. He's still the third ha highest averaging Ruck outside of Gorn, who's injured. If you have English as well in the forward line, then he's, he's the second, the ruck. So I don't mind it there. I am considering Riley O'Brien because of their soft draw, but he is even up and down, and it, when his form's down, they drop him as well. So the ruck line really is a big shamble. Not a huge fan of this. I, You know, but it, it, it's one of those things where you might just have to sort of look to do it. Can Proust make enough money and enough points over the interim to sort of make it worth it? Um, that'll be the interesting part to sort of see how that goes. I'm definitely looking at possibly using those three trades this week. Hobbs, let's see if we can sort of make something happen here. Hobbs to English. So I would have banked about 150000 from the other trade before from um, Gorn down. So I've got 260000 I'm pretty sure I could easily then flip someone. Himmelberg's about 430. Right, so what do I need? I need about a hundred and hundred and eighty thousand dollar player around that mark, which could be Stevens. Now I don't like to flip Stevens. I'd rather keep Clark for a bit to sort of make a little bit more money. Seven trades, six trades, one down, one up to four. Look, I don't mind it. It is risky. Four is definitely less than I'd have, but again, if I have a loophole player, I can cover one to two week injuries. It's the longer term injuries that you would use those for um, to, as a trade for. So you could still sub in, a, a you know, a, a, um, unless it's a defender, then obviously I'm a little bit more screwed there. You'd hope Weir's playing or someone like that, or Dean if you have them. 
Um, I'd rather get rid of Clark, but 455, yeah, so I could do that trade there. Uh, Himmelberg, how much is he? Oh, maybe it's 1M. There we go. Oh, why am I? Oh, mid, 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 mid. Okay, so let's get rid of him. 435, and I could do that trade. So that's definitely not a worse consideration. Me, GWS players. Why am I picking these GWS players? They're horrible. Um, so that's definitely another situation that I could sort of look at and then sort of play at that point then. Even with Proust in my team, I can automatically go into a sort of loophole scenario, a uh, little bit of cash, so 19000 I'd probably then look at going Clark down, Himmelberg up to a Bontempelli in two weeks' time, and I should then actually have cash for any other issues. If I have a trade that I need to make, I can sort of do it that way and sort of go about it that way, or possibly even... If I trade, say, Clark down, he might be at 270,000. I make 170,000. Himmelberg is up to like 530, maybe in two weeks' time. I maybe throw 50,000 there. I've got 100,000 in the bank. If Proust goes up to uh, 510,000, which is feasible, I could just put one more trade straight back on. So there's a two trade scenario. Proust is, uh, so Proust to go on later is a possibility. Um, I'll have. No, that'll be for more the Bontem Pelly reasons. So down one, up one, two, three, if I want to go on back in. It gets a little bit tricky, as you can see. I'm just trying to think out loud as to what I'm going to do. Sorry for flicking my screen. Six trades. That's not the worst option I could do. I could then loophole Proust. I can then have a look. And um, English is here. I'd be keeping Brody at this current point in time. Parker would be in a, like on, on the field there. And automatically, right from now, if Brody wasn't having the sub, then I could automatically loop um, you know, Himmelberg, Butters, etc. If I trade Himmelberg to sort of Bontempelli, I'd have four trades, Butters would be over here with Proust, and I'd still get the same sort of scenario as I had before. So, as you can see, there's using that trade, it's not really going to change my team too much except for the fact that I might have $100,000 less. Now, if someone gets injured for a bad score and they drop money, I have money to actually then upgrade that person to the person I want. Otherwise, you're sort of looking for the next best available player around the price point they can afford, which sometimes does become an issue. Uh, it is something to sort of consider. That's what I'm thinking. Um, the other one I was looking at was definitely looking at Riley O'Brien in and doing the same sort of scenario as before, but I'm not really sure I like it. You know, Adelaide have a soft draw, so I don't mind it too much. Um, Darcy has the buy, so I'm not really that interested in that. Uh, unless, again, I, if yeah, if Tegel doesn't play, I might even just keep going for a week and play the round out. I've already got 18. So, again, those rookies, if they score a 50 or 60, then that sort of means I'm only losing about 50 points on a premium. So that way I could probably go Darcy next week. But I'm not 100% sold on Darcy either. So it's... One of those situations where I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for teams to be announced to see if Tickle's named. If he's named, I'll just wait for Gorn. Um, and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. So let me know what situation you're in. Let me know which of those scenarios that you, that you don't mind. Do you think? Do you like the one where I hold Gorn and use a loophole player to kind of cover that void in the meantime, and then when he comes back, be strong? And um, or do you prefer sort of something like where I bring in Proust and then put a Himmelberg in? Uh, there is the other option where I don't even get Himmelberg. And I just sort of try and um, make some other changes. There is the other possibility where I just sort of play it a little bit longer and I keep my Hobbs and my Clark to make a little bit of cash and just sort of move Gorn to English. These are all the working sort of scenarios that I am considering. So let me know what you think. I'm definitely not sold on what I'm going to do. Teams announced will definitely be a big consideration there. I'm probably leaning to either seeing if I can hold Gorn or doing the whole Proust scenario just because I think... At worst, he still makes money if he's named. I, I still think he's their best Ruckman. I think the illness maybe hindered him a little bit. Um, I guess we'll wait and see on that. Uh, I think Flynn was pretty bad last week. So um, I don't mind either of those two scenarios. I'll just have to weigh up the math in my head as to which one I sort of might go with. Are you on the Himmelberg train or not? Um, 
not going to lie, I probably wasn't really considering Himmelberg until the whole Gorn scenario. And for me, it's a bit of a, a, a gap stopper where I think he can make some money and also possibly do a well enough to that you might actually be able to keep him or at least flip him in a couple of weeks to fill out a side with another premium. At the end of the day, I want English, I want Bontempelli. And even if I need to burn someone to do it or use two trades to do it, I'm definitely looking at sort of that option at this current point in time. Well, that's it for me. That's probably a really long podcast. This is confusing. I hope I've helped you. Hope maybe I haven't made you uh, answer more questions that I've answered. So, uh, or asking more questions that I've answered, should I say? But it is that week where I just wanted to throw out some options, throw out some thoughts on what I'm thinking. And um, again, I just think that loophole player, if I can get one, um, will make up some points in the long run. Being able to loophole, being able to switch around, covering a week, you know, COVID or or injury then that will make up the points for me in the back end. And we've still got 10 rounds to go. So if I can afford that, uh, I don't mind it. Um, We'll see how we go. That's it. Let me know what you're thinking. And I really love your feedback. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.